In the second demo, we'll take a look at a remote support session. So again, we have the customer submitting a chat to a customer service agent. This time, the customer will request help on their PC and the agent will send the join call button back to the customer. When the customer clicks on the join call button, they'll enter the video chat session. Once connected with the agent, the customer can describe the details of the issue to the agent, and then the agent can determine to host a remote support session and start the session from within the video chat. They'll then paste the link in the video session, and the customer will click on the link, and a small download will be delivered to the customer's machine. Now let's take a look at the agent experience. The customer has joined the session, and as with the co-browse session, it's running within the browser. So there is no application for the agent to install or required to run the support session. You also still have the video chat available whilst in the support session. I'll just minimize that again for the purposes of this demo to show you the full experience of remote support. On the right hand side, you'll see the agent toolbar where all your tool set is. So we have features like Windows tools, which are essentially agent productivity tools, where there are shortcuts to things like running programs and features. You know, if you wanted to uninstall or change a program, we also have other things like reboot into safe mode and reboot and reconnect. This will connect you back into the session with the agent to prevent the customer needing to start another session which is particularly useful if you installed something or made a change on the user's machine that requires a reboot. There are other features on the toolbar, such as being able to copy paste from remote device. You can take a screenshot, download that to the agent machine, upload to the customer's machine, or actually add it to the case to view at the end of the session. And that file can be stored in the CRM if you have integration or in the Screamy console, which we'll take a look at after. We also gather some system information, which is really the details of the hardware, the manufacturer, operating system installed. And again, that information will be tracked to the remote support session. There's also some viewing enhancements settings there are also some system performance tuning settings where you can reduce the frame rates per second or the stream resolution. So if you're in a low bandwidth setting, you can configure those to have a better remote support experience. You can also invite third party agents. So if you're in a tier one, tier two support environment or external agencies sometimes help for support, you can create a URL and paste that to uh, another party to join the session. And they can, they can also have remote control. And there's a file transfer feature as well. And as with Cobras, this could be bi-directional, uh, just agent to customer, customer to agent, and you can blacklist certain file extensions. And when you do transfer a file, the customer will be prompted to accept this file so again, with sort of security uh, in the file transfer in mind, the customer needs to accept. This file can also be attached to the incident or case in your CRM system or within the ScreenMe console. And finally, we have chat. So if you've left the video chat, maybe it's a particularly long issue and the customer is no longer there, you can send a chat to inform them that you've completed the job. When you leave the session, the data will be written back to uh, either your CRM platform or the ScreenMeet console, depending on your particular installation. Let's remind ourselves how the agent started the remote support session from within the video chat. The agent went into the meeting tools clicked on the link, 
and went to start the remote support session. You'll notice they have options when starting the session. This is all configurable. So do they want to record the session, start in view only or with full remote control and start with admin privileges. If the session is started in view only and without admin privileges, the agent can escalate to remote control and admin within the session. When they create the session, that will create a link and they can click send session to users and that will populate the chat for the customer. Let's take a look in Screamy console at the session data that was captured. So this is the session that we actually just ran. If I click on that, we can see the information such as when the session was created, the duration and when it ended. And also session pin, if the session was recorded, which this one was, and the termination reason. We can also look at the session log. So the session log shows all the events that happened during that session. So things like remote control was granted, that we did a file transfer, that we took a screenshot, and what those files was called. So you have a complete audit trail of what happened in that session. We also write back the system information. So that was the hardware details. There's no personally identifiable information in there. This is just information about the hardware that we connected to and the operating system. And then there's also the files that are associated with the session. So we have the MP4 of the video recording and also a copy of the file that we transferred to the customer. 